Hey guys, it's Craig. Putting LED backlighting behind a TV is a great smart home project that not only looks good, but is also good for your eyes. But if you've worked with LEDs before, you may know how difficult corners can be at times, especially with thicker LEDs. For my last TV, I used the bad curve that barely stays on technique. This time I did the corners the correct way using the loop method. Let's take a look. I'm not going to drag this correct way thing on. There are multiple great ways to do this. I'm just using the LifeX Z strips and according to LifeX, the correct way to make a 90 degree turn is using the loop method. And the reason why is with these strips, you can't turn them this way or you're going to potentially damage an LED. And if you just try to stick them on and gently make a curve, it causes issues stain. So we're going to use the loop method in this video. I went with the LifeXZ strips because they have some of the best color out there in a consumer product. I say that as someone who has spent 25 plus years in the entertainment industry working with professional LEDs. Uh, the Z strips are not cheap, but they do have some great benefits. They have great color. They're bright. They work with Apple's HomeKit, Amazon, Google, and they're RGBW. And that last one, RGBW, is one of the more important things to me because for LEDs to have great white light, it needs to have the white LED with it. We're seeing more strips adding both warm and cool white LEDs to the RGB since RGB doesn't do that well with warm whites. Before I mount these, there's a good reason to go with LEDs around your TV. When watching TV in a dark room, your eyes are focusing on the objects on the screen, but also trying to balance the light in the room between the brightness of the screen and the darkness of the room. This can put a lot of strain on your eyes. It can lead to dry eyes, headaches, migraines, or just general discomfort after watching TV. LEDs behind your TV are referred to as bias lighting. And bias lighting provides ambient lighting around your TV without it being in your eyes. And this additional light helps create a better light balance in the room for your eyes. Achieving a better balance is much easier on the eyes. Bias lighting can also be great for computer monitors too. If you need some good suggestions for LED strips, there are links in the description at different price points. This is the first time that I've used this loop corner technique and I found that it really helps with keeping all the sides locked down because with this loop in here you're able to secure the LED strips down easily without any tension on it on both sides and the loop just kind of sits there uh, nicely. Now if you don't do that and I've done this technique before if you try to put it down and try to use the least amount of, lose the least amount of strip possible uh, it puts a lot of tension on the strip and they're more likely to come off. Now to make one of these loops, what you end up doing is you take one side of it and go up and curl back down. Now you don't want to do this too tight if you do take the chance of damaging the inside of the strip and you waste a lot of money. Uh, something to think about though when you do this is you lose about four to five inches because right here uh, is where it is being held down. That's about the, as close as you can go to make this corner. And if we unfold this here, you'll see that you're about four or five inches there, about probably closer to five inches that you're losing because of that loop. So something to keep in mind, definitely lay out your LEDs first, especially when you're working with LEDs that are sold in one meter increments like this, um, because you don't wanna have to make an extra meter work if you don't need to. And it might just mean moving in a little bit on the sides or the top and you could use one less piece. As per the instructions in the manual, I've laid out my TV on a soft surface so I can work on the back of it. Uh, what I need to do now is figure out how much uh, LED strips I need because you don't want to have too much and you're going to end up with excess and it becomes a pain. You want to get as close as possible, especially if you're working in one meter increments like I am. So yeah, I'm going to measure the path that I want to take 
and I have 54 inches wide is about how far I'm going. So that's 108. And then I got uh, 40 or 32 high. So that is 64 plus 108. So that is 172. And then I need to add five inches for each of the corners uh, to give me enough room to make the loop. So that's going to be another 20 inches on that. So if I take 192 inches divided by 12, and we end up with 16 feet. So that would be uh, five meters would be 15 feet. So now really the best bet is probably gonna be to go with that 15 feet uh, instead of going with 16 feet because trying to lose the excess can be a pain. So I'm going to use five meters of this now, starting off with the three meter pack and then I'll add two extensions to that. Now that we know that, I'm gonna lay out the loops and one of the things I like to do after it's laid out is warm them up by giving it some power, get it set up and just let it warm up before sticking the adhesive down. So let's get started. So before attaching the LEDs, use the included wipe to clean the surface. You don't want any grease, oils or debris that keep it from sticking nicely. I didn't show that in my video so I did wanna make sure that you do use the included wipes uh, to clean the surface so it sticks the best that it can. One of the things you wanna do before you go any further, and I just double checked mine, is power up the TV and make sure it works. You don't wanna burn through a bunch of money worth of LEDs to find out that there's something wrong with the TV. But now, I have my five one meter strips here. I'm gonna start laying these out. I know it's five, so I'm going to need, I'm gonna start at the top with one solid one, because I want it to end down at the bottom. I just want it to be nice and solid around the top and sides. Um, so I'll start with one there and then start making the loops on these and make sure to try those out. And then what I'll do is I actually have a bin here of some tape because it's not too heavy that I could rest on it to help shape it. And then I'll turn it on, let it warm up some so it gets used to that shape before we expect the adhesive to hold it in that shape. So let's get started with this. So we'll first start off with this top strip right here and get everything kind of fitted the way that we want to know if it's gonna actually fit before pulling off the adhesive. I'm just laying these out approximately where they'll go and then go around each side. Now to make the loop, we want this to sit here. So then we need it to loop back around like that to create our loop. So now, now to create our loop, if this is centered up right here, we connect this together. Then next, let's try this corner because we need this to end right around here. So now let's figure out our loop. Again, come around and out right there. Oh my gosh, that meets up beautifully. That is what we're looking for. Right there, I'm gonna put just a little bit away. I don't want it to get away. Now this tape I'm using to put stuff down is called gaffer's tape. It's used in the entertainment, TV, music, all that business stuff uh, because it peels off, doesn't leave residue. So they're not too heavy, just heavy enough to hold them in place, but not too heavy to worry about damaging anything. So I'm gonna continue going around. I have the shape roughed in right now. I'm gonna do a pass and kind of make sure it's even. You do wanna make sure that on the corners, you're not bending or putting tension on a point uh, where you can crack or break part of the LED. That's where you need the corners to have enough of a loop there. So you want them tight enough to not give up too much length on it, but you also don't want to damage the LED. So next step, I'm gonna power these up and just let them warm up, get them set up through the app, let it get all little heated up, and then uh, we'll stick them down. I have my LEDs powered up, making sure everything works, heating them up so that it just kind of goes down easier and it gets used to that shape. But now's a good time just to kind of go through the color and see that everything is working properly. 
and then uh, give it a little bit of time. I've had these on for a bit, so now I'm going to go through and start to uh, attach them. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with some points that I know don't wanna shift. Like the bottom, I want that to stay exactly where it is. The top is one solid piece. And the loops, you can actually do adjustments within the loops by making what their size is, but where the size of that loop. But by just kind of smoothing out the tops and just letting the sides be the place of adjustment, I think is gonna be the best approach for this. I'll start off first by unplugging this. And um, I'll go over here to the top and yeah this stuff just wants to slide around I just want to get this one piece in to kind of anchor it um, give us a strong give us a center line yep. okay we got the center right there and now I can lay this out nice and even and then just reattach that end over there and there's the other brake right there normally I like to run it all attached as one piece but um, with this since there are the corners there is some flexibility in there I do want to plug this back in so that I get this the centerpiece placed properly actually there's a little bit of 3m tape on there and again I'm starting at the different points because these are the places I don't want to shift and the corners the loops give you some flexibility in there give you a little room to play with it so this I want to start right on the center line and then the idea is I'm going to I think work these ones back to the loop and uh, get it dialed in there so I think it's just really one of those projects take your time with do it right once um, I'm so much happier that I can do the last one I did was um, trying to make a former set work uh, on a larger TV. It was kind of a pain. So I'm excited to be able to lay these ones out properly and to really kind of figure out the spacing instead of making a previous kit for a smaller TV work. And the thing is, it's like I want to make it as neat as possible, but it is very forgiving on the backside here of the TV. I want to work on these right here and just see how this is starting to lay out. If I plug that back in, it's like you don't want to, want to put too much pressure on these. This is all looking good, so I'm actually going to try to peel the tape back and work this way towards the loops. Now these two corners over here are done and they feel so secure. This is like one of the best attachments I've ever done. It really feels nice. I like this technique, first time I'm using it. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. Now here's a little look at the strips in use. Keep in mind that uh, these are shining on a wall that's been painted black using a color called Nightclub. Uh, so they're popping well now. They would do much better on a lighter color. But on the ceiling and other walls, you can see the light that's given off by these strips. I like that you can create different moods with them. Definitely a lot of fun for movie nights. As a lighting guy, I love LED strips behind your TV, not only for the mood that they create, but the ambient light they add into to a room. I don't like overhead lighting at all. I'm a big fan of lamps and indirect lighting. So these are great for me. Uh, they, they not only look awesome, they help your eyes. So if you have a non-tech lover, someone who doesn't want these in the house, just tell them it's for their eye health. Are you using LED strips? If so, where? Now, if you made it this far, please give this video a thumbs up. It helps with the video getting recommended to more people. If you haven't subscribed, please do that now. Click the bell so you'll be notified of the next video. Next, make sure to check out this video over here for some more smart home information. It's got some good stuff, and I'm not just saying that because I made it. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.